Sorry, sir, are you looking for a bus? Brought to you by our friends of the British Council. Hey everybody, welcome back to Rugby Wrap-Up. Matt McCarthy here in New York City at the Fantasy Sports Network. Studio 34, around the block from Madison Square Garden. And we're talking rugby. We're talking all kinds of rugby. And this time we're talking rugby on this side of the pond in America. And uh, we got an MLR segment coming up with the Rooney guys, the Rugby United New York guys, talking about their big match against Boston uh, at Gaelic Park. But first... I want to talk about a little American politics, a little Congress action. And we've got Congressman Steve Lewis here to talk about it. Martin, you're going to be the eye candy for this segment, by the way. So just, yeah. Go ahead, Steve. Give us the skinny on the Congress. What's going on? Yeah, so pretty busy week in um, the sort of higher echelons of uh, governance in American rugby. Uh, last week, in con Congress in particular, had a call on the Wednesday night and had the sort of um, first ever... Uh, re vote on a recall petition for a sitting USA Rugby board member. That was Chad Keck. Um, the vote was 24-14, 24 in favor of recalling Chad, 14 against with eight no-shows, um, some of which had an excuse, some of which are inexcusable uh, absence. So basically you had half of Congress repudiating Chad's um, performance and tenure and um, essentially down to his oversight of RIM. Congress's remit is oversight and accountability of the board. Chad was the member of the USA Rugby Board assigned to RIM, and therefore he is the one who is essentially responsible from an oversight perspective. Obviously, Sternberg is the operational guy. Was the operational guy. He should be gone. Um, but obviously, RIM now, we're facing imminent financial catastrophe, which will affect our um, national teams in the fourth quarter in the November test window. So there's, a, there's quite a good deal of reasons behind it, but that, that's the skinny. The 24 votes, incidentally, were not the um, required quorum. You need two-thirds to actually recall a sitting board member. You needed 31 votes. Uh, with only 37 people on the call, that was going to be a tough ask. So Chad Keck was not recalled, despite a majority of Congress voting to recall him. Martin, the, the Internet is on fire with rumors about what's going on, including... David Sternberg stepping down as the CEO of RIM. Do you think RIM should go forward? Or do you think they should just pack it up? And, and the rugby channel as well. <laughs> I was t telling um, Steve uh, before we came on, um, in such circumstances that you, you'll find uh, journalists being cir circumspect for various reasons. Um, I'm circumspect on this because I would not like to comment or in, uh, with the appearance of authority on something I don't feel authoritative about. That said, it's a terrible, terrible mess. Yeah, yeah, it is a terrible. You can see, mess. I'm raising my eyebrows, Roger Moore style. Yes, that is. Yeah, that's good. That's good. I like when he does that. Stephen, what was the purpose of the recall petition? I, I think it was really um, a frustration on the part. Well, obviously, I've been. Um, somewhat outspoken critic of this particular board for and their performance for some time. So. Uh, with events trending the way they are, the rugby channel going bust, uh, 4.2 million lost up to the end of 2017, with uh, RIM unlikely to make its fourth quarter payment to USA Rugby, which affects HP. With high performance for the yeah, high performance. People, yep. With RIM putting on events in Sacramento and Fullerton with 3,700 people, no aftermatch function, the men's national team eating at Subway on the way home, women's athletes zero per diem. The treatment of athletes has been disgraceful. Um, the South Africa-Wales game, requiring 27000 to break even, with a minimum legal liability of 700000 That's going to cost That's us money. That's to cancel. To cancel it. If you wanted to cancel you it, you had to, cancel to it. So pay can't each cancel team seven hundred k. You can't. So now we're going to make a loss. A, a World Cup Sevens, which is projected to either be a $300,000 loss or break even. These things now impact on USA Rugby. It is now a detrimental financial situation for USA Rugby. That's why I initiated a, a recall petition, got the votes, and we put it to, to a vote. And you've come a long way, baby. You had two votes or something the first time you tried to do something. Now you had 24 
with eight no-shows, right? Yeah, I mean, actually, I think this is a positive thing for Congress. I think finally Congress is actually doing its job. Um, I think Congress members are infinitely more educated and much more energized and much more uh, involved. And I think the 14 have voted no. I think, I think certain things that will come out in the next two, three weeks, they will reconsider that vote and regret it. However, Congress is going in the right direction in terms of its um, eff effectiveness and fulfilling its role. So that, that's actually a positive given also that we have the potential for a new CEO, well, not the potential, we're having a new CEO and two potentially new, two new board members, this is actually a, an opportunity in transition rather than a crisis. We, we could switch around some key people here and we can move this thing in a positive direction for American rugby. So that's the way we've got to look at it. Opportunity, not crisis. Prediction, as per RIM and the Rugby Channel. Uh, rugby Channel's pretty much gone. Um, Possible face-saving deal, can't really discuss. Um, RIM, again, there are movements on the board there. There are some changes on the board. Um, again, probably better to let that come out in appropriate channels. So what you're saying is the rugby channel is will probably be under somebody else's umbrella. Well, look, here's a, it was a flawed concept to start with. So what we're doing is we are turning our most natural allies and partners, NBC, CBS, ESPN, into competitors okay i mean it, it was a nonsense we're trying to grow the game and you're putting rugby behind a paywall okay it's it's nonsensical it's flawed i'm glad i'm not glad it's failed but i think uh i think it well, has nbc's got a paywall they've got the, the gold package i understand that but they've got infinitely different quality yeah. of content that's true yeah why this focus on chad keck in particular yeah, that's a good point, and actually it was one of the uh, con contrary arguments. People said uh, he's being singled out, he's a nice guy, um, to which the refrain is, you know, we're not, it's not a popularity contest. We're not judging Chad on his personality, we're judging him on his performance. He is a nice guy. The board is responsible. I hold multiple members of the board responsible, not just Chad, but Chad was the one assigned to RIM. He had the USA Rugby board seat on the RIM board previously, and he was specifically tasked with oversight of RIM. So it's not about Chad, it's about the performance of the board as a whole, and he has essentially become a lightning rod for the incompetence of RIM, the poor execution of RIM. All right, All right. and on that note, we are out of time, but we are back with JBL, John Bradshaw Layfield, um, Mike Tolkien, and Marcus Walsh of the R-U-N-Y Rooney, Rooney, Rooney squad, Rugby United New York. We'll be right back after this. If you're just joining us, this is a big match and a big moment as Kleister's toes the line. You know, John, Anderson has really been struggling out there today. mistake as Kleister's clinches another title. Don't let your nutrition get in the way. USANA, the official multivitamin of the WTA. If you're in New York City and want to watch some great rugby, have some great food, and some great times, go to the world's best rugby pub, The Pig and Whistle on West 36th Street. Hey everybody, welcome back to Rugby Wrap Up. Matt McCarthy here at the Fantasy Sports Network Studio 34 here in New York City. We're talking rugby in New York City. And I've got some big people in the studio with me right now. The larger than life JBL John Bradshaw Layfield, Mr. Mike Tolkien, and Marcus Walsh. And these gentlemen have one thing in common, ladies and gentlemen. They are part of history here in New York City. They are part of Rooney. Okay, that's kind of it. We gotta, we're going to get that going, that Rooney thing. Rugby United New York is the professional team that's going to be playing its real, uh, real season next year, but they're playing exhibition season, which is real rugby and great to watch. And we all got to see the uh, history being made on a crisp Saturday at Iona College, a cold, sunny day here in New York. And it was yeah. on St. Patty's Day, and it was a great day. And uh, I got to say, guys, it was great being there. You all had different perspectives. John, John Bradshaw Layfield as the owner, Mike Tolkien as the coach, Marcus had the best seat as the scrum half, and uh, yours truly as the pundit slash wannabe owner, coach, and player. 
uh, I want to go through. I know you guys are in a rush, so I want to go through what your perspective on the whole thing was. Well, the reason we're in a rush because you're starting this half an hour late. See, that's going to waste time. That's wasting time right there. <laughs> no, you wasted time. You just I'm wasted 30 seconds. Let's go to Marcus. <laughs> and you sent me an email about your dog. You sent me a picture of your dog. You know what? Uh, Junkyard Dog was my favorite wrestler. Oh, I love Junkyard you were Dog. Supposed to get that. You were supposed to get that. Okay. It was, a, it was like a it was furry my dog. dog. It, was a do- it was a mutt. Right? And it wasn't on a leash Junkyard either. Dog. It's probably in the streets now. It's been run over. Did you see the junkyard behind him in the photo? No, it was the Empire see? State Building behind him. It was him. art. It was, it was green. Art. It was art. It was junkyard or, or dog art. Or, All right. So anyway, Irish. right behind you, it says Rugby United New York on the wall in a T-shirt. You are part of the ownership group of this f- historic franchise. What was it like for you sitting there watching one first after the next? Well, you know, it, it's an overwhelming experience, you know, to have uh, Mike Tolkien, uh, one of the greatest coaches, uh, certainly in USA history, one of the greatest coaches in the world, and then to have a team out there playing. It was uh, incredibly fun to watch. I, I really didn't know what to, to expect. You know, I knew we were going to be physical because I knew the way Mike coaches, Bruce McLean coaches. And Canada comes in, we had a little more narrow pitch than normal. Uh, they're big guys, known for being physical, but the, the way our guys took the physicality to them, could not be more prouder. I mean, this is a true New York team. These guys are real tough guys. They love to hit. They love to move the ball around. It was a fun game to watch. Yeah, it was. It was, it, it was, it was very pleasantly surprising in the sense that it wasn't hyped by design a lot, right? Because it's St. Paddy's Day. You know anything about St. St. Paddy's Day? It's a little bit. A little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, so, you know, there was a lot to compete with. It was a Six Nations weekend at Ireland at Twickenham on St. Paddy's Day. But, you know, we all started there. We were at this great event at the Pig and & Whistle. And then we go up to, the, to Iona. And the rugby on the field was tremendous. It was great. It was very entertaining. And you, you got a lot to be proud of on that, Coach. Oh, it was good. I mean, I give a lot of credit to the guys. You know, it, it was a... Uh, Took a lot of bumps and uh, stops and starts to begin, but once we took the field, I think the guys were chomping at the bit. You know, they they wanted to get started. We all wanted to get started, and um, you know, they. I'd say to give them a lot of credit right off the bat that they had a lot of energy and a lot of excitement in them, and it showed in the way they played. Yeah, twenty six nothing at halftime. It was really a, it was a, it was a, a match of a tale of two two halves, really. Right. Uh, what do you think the difference? was that you guys came out on fire and got to that 26 nothing lead. I was just saying it to Mike there that I, I thought that we were really firing on all cylinders in the warm-up. I thought that um, everyone's mind was, was task-orientated. We were just really goal-focused, and I think the process was to go out and execute the game plan that we knew that would win the game. And I thought we did very well in the first half and, and parts of the second half also. And, you know, everything was a first. We were, we were joking around about it on, in the stands. James Kennedy, the owner, said, Oh, this is a record crowd, <laughs> right? <laughs> first, first try, first conversion, first, first scrum, first try. We, we first line out. Uh, truth be told, yours truly uh, tweeted out the first tr- ever try to Dylan Fawcett, which was incorrect. It was actually Anthony Parry. Uh, that's corrected on camera. The first ever troll on social media corrected you. First ever rugby troll from I here. I don't know what to, I don't know how to dignify that response. Security? Well, it, it, Security? I think it was appropriate. <laughs> yeah, yes, absolutely. Security, you want to stay away from me. He's bigger around than you. in a green wig taking pictures of balls. It wasn't me. That was you. You were on me. all fours take, crawling around taking pictures. No, I was on my of, tummy. I was on my tummy, if we're going to be specific. And that was art, that photo. That was art. Okay? Uh, Mike, going forward, you got a big match this weekend. You got Gaelic Park, gritty New York scene, Gaelic Park. How do you get the guys focused again for another week, another big first, and you, you got some injuries? Uh, I mean, injuries are part of the game. You know, that you're always going to have injuries, so you, 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 know, you, don't, you look past that. But I think playing in Gaelic Park the first time John saw it, you know, he loved it. This kind of iconic New York City type of place, you know, up in the Bronx. And... Uh, Again, the guys, you know, with this winter and stop starting practice, the guys just want to play ball. Yeah. And, you know, so, so do I. And, uh, you know, no motivation needed besides getting on the field together with a good, good group of players. Marcus, you got a pretty good rugby background. Uh, you, you were knocking on the door of your under sevens coach when you were under five and your brothers played and they made you throw passes in the garden. Did you ever think at that point that you'd be playing professional rugby in New York City as a kid in Ireland? 
I was only thinking about this the other day. No. And I, by being presumptuous to say you were a kid in Ireland. <laughs> it was always a dream to play professional rugby, but to be to be over in New York is just something that I wouldn't have thought I'd been, I would have done. But yeah, enjoying every bit of it. You know, it's, last Saturday was something that I remember for years. You know, first time a professional team has played on Paddy's Day after Ireland won the Grand Slam. It's it was a dream. It was brilliant, and 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 every Saturday we've got for the next three weeks we got we've got games, which is, is is even better. So playing with friends from back home, playing with new friends that I've just made, it's brilliant. Really enjoying it and really looking forward to the next three weeks. And you were given a breather by a guy that had played in three rugby world cups. That's pretty cool, yeah, Mike Petri. Brilliant, brilliant. He's a really good guy, um, a mentor, great mentor, and learning loads, which which is brilliant. And it's to hear that he was coming back was a little bit worrying but also uh, it was good to hear that he was going to be able to, to show me things that I that I haven't seen and yeah hopefully he passes on a lot of his talent yeah it was great it was great to see that to get a guy like Petri who's been around forever you know yeah, get, th- get that I, shot I think Mike really enjoys that role too you know he's been, he's been around the block and uh, he's just happy to be able to play again after a while so whatever role he he's you know welcome it with open arms and um I think he's really enjoyed working with Marcus and they get along together and do a lot. And he'll pass his experience on, like he said, from three World Cups. John, a lot of people don't realize that you got into rugby late in life. And it was basically when you were going to golf down in Bermuda, (laughs) right? Right. And you you discovered that kids had some real needs there. Soccer didn't cut it and you got into rugby. And you no, got- you're right. Uh, soccer and cricket and Bermuda had tons of legacy issues, drug issues, gang-related issues. Uh, rugby had not been introduced to the public schools, and so what I did was introduce rugby to the public schools so we could build that foundation from scratch and build it with the standards and principles that are uh, pretty much indigenous to rugby, you know, the, the ethos of, of integrity that is so much a part of the fabric of the sport. We could build that from, from scratch, and that's what we did. We introduced rugby to the, the kids there. We've had a really good success rate. We've taken a graduation rate from we think it's around 60 to 70 percent we're not sure governments lie about the numbers Fun, funny how that uh, tends to happen yeah, with yeah. education uh, we have a hundred percent graduation rate among our kids our kids are staying out of trouble and, and we're having a lot of success with rugby in Bermuda but you're changing, Unfortunately, changing just, lives change yeah, yeah we, we won an award a couple years ago uh, about a 7,000 program 17 countries for being best with working with gang type kids you know unfortunately we just had a, a death on a rugby tour a young man uh, came over and uh, not sure exactly what happened but a, but a, what a horrible tragedy uh, you know you hate to hear any of that so you bring up rugby and Bermuda and the great things that are going on there was a, a recent tragedy that I would be remiss if I didn't mention yeah sure well you know you're that's great work too but now it's in, in an ownership role you're providing all these all these guys that never had an opportunity to play professional rugby here in the United States and specifically in the New York City area that opportunity and you know you've got that opportunity what what do you what are you thinking about uh, the Boston New York rivalry thing yeah I'm looking forward to it on Saturday um, you're going to sn- knock the snot out of them aren't you i think that's wicked the, smart yeah that's uh, that's the goal but uh, <laughs> no, hopefully that's 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 going to happen next saturday yeah yeah i uh, you know, rugby to me, you talk about the opportunity, I think it's the greatest growth opportunity in global sports, uh, professional rugby in North America, not just the United States. We're probably going to have some teams from uh, Ontario come in next year, maybe even Vancouver in the next few years. But I think it's by far the, the greatest opportunity in growth sports in global sports, and I think New York City is the crown jewel. I mean, we're looking forward to that. No offense to the other teams in the Major League Rugby, but this is the biggest market, and this is where you need to have a solid foundation, and that's why we're so honored to have uh, Mike Tolkien being, being our coach and leading us in rugby. We're great between the lines we're building out marketing we're building out sales teams that we're having struggle with you know but between the lines just the rugby we're really solid right now and i'm very proud of that and and you know folks he's not just a wrestler and a male model he actually is a smart <laughs> he's pretty smart he's on fox business network right and and Correct. he was a, a wall street guy for a while worked as an investment banker for several years right so it's uh it's even better that he is involved in this and mike it's, it's a luxury, I would imagine, for you as a coach now. It's not the amateur level completely. You can actually say, hey, I have some needs here. Can you go get them to somebody else rather than you having to make magic? Yeah, yeah. and it's like all the players too. You know, yeah. they, they get some stuff that they always have to you know, find and scratch their way to get, and the uh, same with me. But it's going to be a, uh, a long haul, and we have to look at it that way. But really happy with the setup and where we're going. Well, I'm really happy for you guys. I'm happy that uh, this has all come come to work, come to fruition, and I'm looking forward to the big match and the, the next games coming up. 
and the season and the MLR and all of it because it's, ex it's exciting here on American soil. And uh, we have to go, though, now. So. RugbyUnited.com uh, slash tickets. You can get your tickets for the game this Saturday at 7 o'clock at Gaelic Park. Uh, the police and the firefighters are playing first, and we're not sure even that they're even going to use a ball. They may just get out there and fight. <laughs> that's fine. That's, that's what people love about the, the firefighters playing the police. It's going to be very physical. The ball will be inconsequential. The score will be, too. And after that, we'll have a professional game that's going to be a uh, historic first for New York City. That's right. And um, you're going to body slam somebody at halftime. I am not. You've tried you, to talk me into that. That's not happening. Are you volunteering? I did volunteer to get body, body slammed by him. He said no. All right. Because he knew I would turn it on him. Suplex. <laughs> uh, had a chokehold. Like junkyard dog. Anyway, on that note, we are out of time. But uh, great stuff, guys. Great stuff. Great, great to be part of this history. And we do have uh, a little segment that we did shoot over the weekend that we'll leave the audience with. But on in the meantime, I'm going to say goodbye to you guys, John Br Bradshaw Layfield, Mr. Mike Tolkien, and Mr. Marcus Walsh. Thanks for coming on. Rugby wrap-up. Matt McCarthy out of the Studio 34. Fantasy Sports Network talking rugby in New York City. And that's your game. New York 35 on Mario 19. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Everyone, please stay home safe. Excuse me, sir. Can you tell me who scored the first ever try in professional New York rugby uh, history? Anthony Perry. Uh, Anthony Perry scored the first try, Matt. Uh, I can't take it from him. He scored a great try. Uh, Anthony, can you tell the folks at home who the first try scorer in professional rugby history in New York City was? Uh, I was lucky enough to uh, get past the ball from the other team right in the uh, try zone. So in essence, you made history as the first ever try scorer in New York professional rugby history. Yes, sir. <laughs> what does it feel like? Uh, it feels pretty normal. You know, we, I played a lot of rugby, so it's just uh, one more game. But I, oh, come a day at the office? Is that what you're selling me on St. Patrick's Day? Yeah, no, it was awesome. It was on. awesome. It was awesome. But, uh, you know, Butch was able to kick a grubber right down there, and uh, I, I uh, hustled or else he'd be uh, screaming at me. So Butch, uh, a.k.a. Butcher, Dylan Fawcett. Yes, sir. We, we had inadvertently had it attributed. Yes, yes. To. You don't see many hookers uh, grub kicking 20, 25, 30 meters, uh, and he pulled it off today. All right, well, congratulations, my friend. Many more. All right, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Dylan Fawcett, you corrected us. You said it was Anthony Perry, but you are unmistakably the first ever captain. It's been a couple of great months for you, getting your cap with the Eagles, Team USA, captaining now the New York professional franchise. St. Patrick's Day, you're the captain, followed up by a week at Gaelic Park. What are we, back in Ireland? <laughs> <laughs> now, nah, sure, listen, dream come true, but like onwards and upwards now, and we're really working look forward to this uh, game in Gaelic Park now on Saturday against Boston. Slauncha. 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 Yes! Oh, I don't know, I don't know about that one, sir. I don't know about that one, sir. Give me, give me a... Give me some good shots. And there you go. Give me a look up. And it's always good to see the Connacht George Hook fan club president. James Kennedy, you got it off the ground, baby. You did what a lot of people said could never happen. Professional rugby in New York. How's it feel? It feels fantastic. Um, couldn't have done it without the coaches. So, I mean, they did all the work. I just showed up. So, and the players. And what about that rugby, huh? Some special games out there, special players playing fantastic. Did you think that it was going to be 26 0 at halftime? No, no. I thought Toronto would bring more. Um, I think it'll be a lot tougher when we get up there. But uh, I'm so excited about this team, man. Look at those guys. Well, great, happy St. Patrick's Day capper for you, my friend. Congratulations. Thanks, Matt. This is the H360. A couple of uh, Kiwi guys right here I want to chat with. <laughs> you guys all sound the same, don't yeah, you? I mean, put on a what are you from? Bobby. You guys yeah. from Boston or something? Yeah, Beirut, India. Luke, you're standing in the, in the presence of greatness. With the uh, You're great watching part. rugby wrap up, keep the change. <laughs> in New York City, you usually wear number 20 and basically play scrum half the entire match. What was the difference today? 
Uh, yeah, it's the only jersey that fits me at Old Blue, actually, so uh, I don't get the 15 on my back, but... No, look, uh, normally playing fullback, enjoying it, um, you know, so I want to obviously perform here, perform for my club, and hopefully I can uh, get back in the national team set up in the not too near future. All right, Luke Oyum on St. Patrick's Day. Congratulations. Thank you, buddy. Is that Peaches, Petri? Hello, Peaches. You got to take a picture of the eye. You got to be careful with that. Very nice. How bad is it, yeah? Worth every minute? Oh, yeah, definitely. I won't get stitches because... The scars, man. You made history here today. Uh, first ever professional rugby in New York. Victory, St. Patrick's Day. What do you want to say to the folks at home? Do you first chance? Just with uh, Jonathan uh, with Bobby was here to see us. You guys have great hair. Thank you. Thank you. So do you. Give me an R. R. Give me a U. U. Give me an N. A. Give me a Y. Y. Why does it spell? Heads up! Oh. That works at least yeah. once a match. <laughs> <laughs> so congratulations on being part of history here in New York City. Uh, what do you have to say to the folks at home? Rugby. 